Welcome to the downside. We're jumping right in. Hello. We just met. We just met Heather in a frazzle. Hello. <laughs> uh, first, first, uh, 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 let me. Uh, we have we have uh, guest co-host, familiar face though, Ariel Elias. Welcome back to the downside. Thanks for having me back. I'm a little bit chaotic. Oh, I good. just flew in from Bloomington. I was blooming. It was shit. <laughs> yeah. It was bad. I don't know what I, I have no business doing sh- six show weekends. I'll tell you that. <laughs> I think we could have had one good show if we had taken those six, made it one. And yeah. then last night, there's a final of the six. This right. is in the Mall of America. Which in the mall. Know, in the mall. In the mall. What you think? Foot traffic. But no. Doesn't seem to translate. It's on the fourth floor. You go in the mall, people don't know there's a comedy club in the mall. Well, there's so much in that mall. It's so, I did That's the re- true. I heard they have a very large Victoria's Secret and Lululemon. So, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. what are they? They're going to they're gonna go chuckle when they've got a 5,000 square foot Lulu to hit. I know. You go, hey, you can you can go on a to a comedy club and laugh, or you can go on a <laughs> roller coaster. Exactly. You're competing with an amusement park. Have you been there? No, I've just seen, I've just dreamed. So so I went on the roller coaster, but first they 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 were about to open. It's a Taylor Swift store. That's how big this mall is. They have personalized. That's how big Taylor Swift is? That's how big Taylor Swift is. But but I, yeah I I, I went to the six show and I was like, okay, I've been here six shows. I'm tired, but I'm gonna let's end with a bang. Right. And I go up there, and I I say something of, of my girlfriend, and a guy immediately goes, "You don't have a girlfriend," and I'm like, "No, this is not gonna be a good show." And I try to, I try to, try to get him. And I say, "Well, what do you think I have? Big mistake." Big mistake. And then mistake. he said, "He said ah, you're probably dating." A, and then he said the abbreviated version of transsexual. And I said, "Oh uh, my god!" And one of those where I, 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 I didn't have a funny out, and yeah. I didn't want to, I didn't want to chastise. And his whole family is with him. Also, that could still be your girlfriend. Exactly. That's what I should have said. And that would have gotten a real laugh if I said, what would be wrong with that, sir? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and his whole family's there and they're not reacting at all. And I talk, I plead to his family. I say, please, please. <laughs> if my father said anything, I'd pick him up out of the fucking club. But we are we are theater people. We are performers. So we know that like I like if I go to a show, I also like don't black out. You know what I mean? I deal with a lot of rowdy women at my shows who like they have them out of the house in a minute. A woman got arrested at my show this weekend just no. she got in a fight with her husband and then everyone around them started like being like, get the get her out. And then like ten minutes later I saw her mugshot, somebody sent it to me, and she's in like a cheetah print top in her mugshot. And I'm so bummed out. I'm like, why? Why can't you just have a couple white wine spritzers? Why do we need 12 before we go out. If you're paying money to go to a show, why are we blacking out so we forget it? Of you know? Course. Right? Did you so you were on stage when this happened? I was on stage when the whole thing went down. How far into your set were you? 45 minutes. Oh, okay, so okay. almost done. Unfortunately, I did a 90-minute show. So okay. we were right in the middle of okay. it. Okay. And yeah, and there was just commotion. She kept screaming. But it was it's weird because I get like a like positive heckling where they know so much so that she's just like yelling my mom's name over and over again and I'm thinking like is has my mom just shown up in the back of the theater you know what I mean like it's just a surprise and she's probably like 12 rows back I can't really see and she just keeps saying say something about your mom we want to hear about your mom and I was like we'll get to that and then I guess the audience around her turned on her and they people became mm. complaining so then it was like it was out of my hands it was out of my hand. And did security deal? Do, were you very rarely do I go? Wow, the comedy club really took care of that real quick. <laughs> I barely even noticed that comedy club jump right on that. Right, it's, right, normally right. I'm, it's normally I'm on stage. I'm like, I'd love if someone did something about yeah. this. Yeah. Were they good or, or? They were good because I have a I have a catchphrase. If I say, "Can we get this lovely lady or this lovely gentleman some water?" That means it's time to go. Sure. Because usually at that point, I've exhausted all efforts uh-huh. where you try and razz them back or yeah, yeah, yeah. you know do some crowd work. But then I just say, "Can we get them some water?" means just at least take them out to the lobby and see if they can sober up, right? Yeah. And then apparently she started throwing bows at the security guard or the cop, and then that was it. Wow. And at that point, I'm like, well, then that's on you. Like, what are we doing, though, as a society that we need to get that fucking blackout or go to a show at a club on a Sunday night in the Mall mm-hmm. of America and just yell, you know, random shit? Yeah. And I, I mean, would never let my family members do that. Like never. you said, never. 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 I would never go out with them. Not at all. To an Not event? And it was just it was just one of those moments where I've talked about it before, but I had a I had I had a joke and it was about a, a Britney Griner and it had a dark twist. Yeah, we but love I a did, dark twist. It had a good dark twist and not a not a 
it, it's still you could be a progressive and still enjoy it. Yeah. But I was in <laughs> I was in North Carolina and and I I I said Britney Griner got released from the prison in Russia and someone in the back went boo and I did the worst comedic impulse where I said I think it's good when Americans are released from foreign prisons. Silence. No, even people who agreed, they're like, well, it's not funny. Right. Just like I, right. I have that thing where suddenly I become like, I need to. So I, I resisted the urge to be like, you shouldn't say that term and had nothing instead. I tried to make a joke about his his nephew was there. Something about his boyfriend was his nephew. Did not work. <laughs> did not play. Did not read. Sometimes the synapses did just not aren't read. firing the way that they should. And yeah. you just come out blank. And it's heartbreaking and devastating when it happens but you just don't have it it's so and then funny you just have to let them win people yeah. comment on my crowd work video sometimes they go he never misses and i'm like brother i miss all i miss like, more than i, I missed when i played basketball misses. it is brutal yeah <laughs> but people only see the highlights right and now if you're not putting up six thousand videos of crowd work God. it's like do you, you know some are you a professional I anymore had somebody comment on one of my videos like i you know i posted a crowd work thing and they they said, you know, what? I'm I'm really trying to like crowd work, but I just don't. And I was like, I don't either. Mm. None of us like it, oh. but we have to feed the algorithm every day. Yeah. And yeah. there's only so much material that we have. Yeah. It's hard to write it. This is the downside. One, two, three. Downside. You're listening to the downside. The downside. With John Marco Cerezi. Well, I don't even think I said the name, so let me introduce my guest: uh, a comedian, uh, a, a writer, social media star, actor, Heather McMahon. Welcome to the philanthropist. Show. You forgot <laughs> philanthropist. Forgive me, forgive me. I have it come here. Come on, come on. I, uh, Saving the children with the cancer. No, I don't know. <laughs> this is the downside. This is a place, Heather. Just so you know, which yes. we just met. This is a place where you can complain, you can kvetch, you can. I bitch, love it. You can moan. Do you know kvetch? I know kvetch. Okay, yes. good. Just quarter Jewish. Sure. Yes, yes. Oh, quarter Jewish. Only quarter, and I found out recently. Yes. Which How quarter? recently? So my mother called me one day, randomly, a couple months ago, and she's just like, you're never going to believe this. We're Jews. I said, what do you mean, we're Jews? <laughs> Raised uh, Christian, okay? Raised in a Christian school. Um, saved in the blood of Christ. And I said, so she found out her mom was adopted, and she was technically Italian Jewish, but raised Italian Catholic, my grandmother. So technically on my mother's mm. grandmother's side, on my mom's side, we're Jews. Jews. Jews from Italy? From Italy. See, wow. amazing, because I'm a Jewish on my mom's side, Italian on my dad's side. Yeah. Some Sicilians reached out, like Instagram, we yes. have the same last name, and they said, we're Jews, and so, I need to do the research, but part of me is like, maybe I'm even Jewish on my dad's side, which would be crazy. And so we're would Sicilian. also make all of the sense. It would make all yes, of the sense. it would make all the sense. We're Sicilian, and that's where the, the Italian Jews came from, Sicily. Huh. Sicilian. Sicilian, Messina. That's the town we're from. Sorezi. It's a what street. In Palermo. Great, I think. great. We love it. We love it. So we might, I'm, I am apparently a part of the tribe, but I'm really conflicted because I love Jesus Christ. So <laughs> what do I do? Sure, <laughs> sure. Did you, does it mean, did, I mean, have you processed it yet? Well, I did say that I would love to do Passover. You know, Yom Kippur is coming up, but I don't, that's too soon. You know what I mean? But Yom Kippur Passover, is, I could be ready for. Yom Kippur is also too deep of a dive to take yeah. first. Which that is Yom Kippur? Yom Kippur is the New Year's. atoning for, no, that's Rosh Hashanah. Oh, excuse Yom me. Yom Kippur I, is, oh, uh, it's okay. You. You're yeah. very no, new. It's so new. <laughs> take some time. Yom Kippur is close to New Year's. It's 10 days later. And it's when we atone for our sins and mm. we fast for the day. The joke I always wrote about it was that as a woman, Yom Kippur is my favorite holiday because I'm used to apologizing for things I don't even remember and not eating for a day. Yes, amen. Amen, sis. Amen. I thought that so hard. But Yom Kippur is an intense one. It's okay. Like you beat your chest. You apologize for your sin. Not like, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Not like going ham on it, but you're, which we don't do. We don't do ham. Um, <laughs> but you're, but you're, you're, you're like apologizing all day. You have to reach out to people and be like, hey, I'm sorry if I hurt you it's a tough it's it, it seems not a little gaslighty right like it's, um I guess it is a little gaslighty I think the idea is that you're apologizing for things you don't even know if you did them because you, your your actions can have unintended consequences that you don't even realize so you're apologizing for everything got it by the way I didn't know any of this so I'm yeah. learning this just along with you wow I 
you have so many new jokes that have opened up. Yeah, you really say <laughs> so so many Holocaust jokes just right out the gate. Right out the gate. I have a clip from our last episode, and I had to like I'm trying to clear it because it's we say the word Holocaust. You say the word Holocaust several times. As I do, and I have to make sure TikTok doesn't ban it because they think ugh. is Holocaust a banned word on TikTok? Nazi is the word that got fucking. I got I got shadow banned as a as a, a terrorist on Facebook. Really? Oh my god. As, as if the Nazis are always just saying the word Nazi. Like, that's how you catch them. <laughs> They're constantly just yeah. saying it as opposed to alluding to it. Yeah. So, uh, uh, well, uh, I'm very happy to have another wow. Jew. This wasn't going to be yes. a super Jewy episode. No, Honestly, I just... we were going to talk about Christianity, but I guess not. I, listen, we can lean in. I will tell you about the light of the Lord. You know, I'll tell you what I've been, what I've grown up with, but I'm, I'm free to go whichever you feel, way you want to go. But, but do, you, do you say to yourself now, oh, Christ was a Jew? And you're like, well, now you're, does it yes. make a Jew make you even closer to the thing? It should make me even closer to the thing. You know what I mean? But I do also believe you know, um, I don't know. He died for my sins. So I, I, they're like, he's still coming back. I go, I think he riz, arose. You know, so it's a, uh-huh. I'm just really going through it. I'm going to Italy this week. So I think maybe get back in touch with those Italian roots and then we'll see. We'll just, I'm, I'm along for the journey. How Have you thought about Jews for Jesus? Have you looked So I, I mentioned that to my mom. Well, that's what she is already. Yeah, I technically am a Jew for <laughs> Jesus. And my mom goes, ooh, I don't think they got a great reputation. <laughs> True. What did that's- they do? Oh, I don't know. I don't think they did anything crazy. No, I just. Are you think- telling me that there's a religious organization that has <laughs> some 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 bad past? I know behavior? my I know my mom always had a little uh, chip on her shoulder about them calling themselves Jews because the whole thing of being Jewish is that Jesus is not your Lord and Savior. Sure. Right? Yeah. That's that's. I mean, that's not the whole thing, but that's a big thing. Yeah, but Jews, there's so many different flavors at this point. You're like, why? Might as well. I'm a non-Jew Jew. Yeah, it's I like mean, seltzer. It's, yes. You're a non-Jew Jew. No, no, no. Oh. I'm just saying, like, yeah. I, I've heard re- re- yeah, reconstruction yeah, yeah. is, what are the most? Uh, yeah. Hasidic. Right. Orthodox. Conservative. Chabad, which is under ch- Hasidic. Mm-hmm. Reform. Reform. Reconstructionist. Reconstructionist. Kabbalah. Kabbalah. I thought that was a vice president. And then uh, <laughs> culturally. Sure. Secular. Secular. Non-humanist. Non-humanist? What's a non-humanist? I don't know. I've just heard it in conjunction with secular. And it sounds good, And right? Jews for Jesus. So there you go. Jews for Jesus. Jews for Jesus just doesn't have the... It doesn't... Yeah. All, all those things yeah, sound yeah, like yeah, they're yeah. religious. Mm-hmm. And then Jews, Jews for, for Jesus. Jesus. Sounds like it's the four spelled with the, the That's number. How you know they're not really Jews. Mm. Mm. Uh, well, let's just let's get right into the religion. Fuck it. <laughs> Just get you, in it. You were raised religiously. Yes, I went to a Christian school my whole life. Um, was baptized. You know what I mean. Did the thing. Yeah, I mean I'm from Atlanta, Georgia, but I'm half Italian, half like Scots Irish. So, but wasn't raised Catholic. I was just raised kind of non denominational Christian. I'd say I lean probably more Methodist. You know, they're pretty chill. Are they Methodists nice. are chill. Methodists are chill. I remember they had that commercial in the early aughts. That was uh, it was in, it was in a church and a, at a pew, and then there were two women who were dressed like sex workers, and it, there was like a little springboard that that threw them out, and then there were <laughs> two there were these two gay couple, you know, like a gay couple, and then a little springboard threw them out, and then somebody else, <laughs> and then they they said you know, and then it said, but here at, at you know the Methodist church, we take everybody. We do, we take them. So all. so then the spring, then they land in the Methodist. They church. land in the yeah, baptism yeah, yeah. pool. Yeah. And then and then they were saved in the blood. Yeah. yeah, that's how that went. But that this was, you know, 2004, 2005. It was yeah. very progressive for the time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, sure, sure. Um, okay, so you were raised with that. that so you had a, a baptism. When had you a baptism, a yeah. And my mom grew up Italian Catholic, but didn't like that she went to confessional. That whole thing didn't make sense to her. Mm-hmm. And she was like, uh-huh. why am I praying to, like, the, the saints, like the Peters and the Pauls and all this, when there's one person that you should, like, you know, throw your cares and worries to, which was Jesus. Sure. So my mom was kind of, like, anti-Catholic, non-denominational. So I don't know. I'm just kind of like a mutt. What about your dad? My dad was um, raised kind of non-denominational Christian as well. So glad this is the first thing out the gate that we're just peeling back the layers up. So, okay. And, and my Catholic. husband's Catholic, Italian Catholic. But the interesting thing is because I went to Christian school and I didn't go to Catholic school, like Christian school, they really drive home the the um, uh, revelation part of it. So, like, I'll quiz my husband. I'll be like, do you know, like, the, you know, the seven, uh, what is it, the four horsemen and the seven trumpets? He's like, I have no idea what the fuck you're talking about. The and seven he, trumpets? Yeah, like at the end of the, end of the world. The French horn. Yeah, like, exactly. For, like, exactly. different people, you mean. Yeah, yeah. Though, like, the signs of the time. So, I was, like, kind of went to a Jesus is returning any minute so you could your life right religion and so i i know all about revelation but my husband who grew up like staunch catholic he can't he didn't know any verses he knows a lot of tradition but 
of he doesn't know like a lot of Bible study. Does that make sense? Yes. Was there anxiety of of like if you were doing something naughty, you said, "Oh, what if it's now?" Like you don't have you have fire alarms at school? Did you have like Jesus alarms? Like Jesus is coming. He's here. He's here. No, we did not have those. We did not have those. Actually, I think it was fairly... Well, I did go to such a conservative Christian school, though, that was a sect called Church of Christ, which is actually really fucked up. Like, they don't believe in uh, uh, music, because, like, dancing. Oh. Even though I'm like, hello, um, you know, didn't Gabriel and everybody else, like, you know, dance and rejoice for the Lord? So there was a lot of that shit that I, like, didn't listen to. Um, there was a lot of guilt there. Like, I grew up at a school that they didn't teach you about, like, absence or anything. It was just, you know, if you touch a penis, you'll your hand will fall off kind of vibe. sure and but i had a good home upbringing so my parents were like that's bullshit you know what i mean like get don't to, be crazy get to how did you parse all that out because here's here's my curiosity is that you, yes. you, you you do believe in this thing that's tied to an institution but it sounds like you carved out your parents just carved out kind of whatever you know well my parents sent me to a great school but then i would come home and i would tell them things and my dad was like this is fucking crazy that's not actually accurate so i don't know i just had like very like cool liberal parents who also love the Lord but were like don't listen because you gotta live in like the real world and not be a, fu- a fucking cuckoo it's like you know Christianity I mean? a la carte a, a little bit a little, a little bit. bit Christianity a la carte and you know when I go to steakhouses I om- almost don't ever get the filet I get the sides I like the cream spinach you know what I mean the loaded baked potato I like the seafood oh. tower the so being I think able that- to touch mm-hmm. a dick once in a while exactly yeah. exactly yeah uh, did you? F- what about hell? Was hell in oh, your Oh, yeah, mind? hell's a real thing. Yeah, and sometimes when I take a gummy, I'll go on YouTubes at night, and then I'll watch people who say that they've been to hell, that they've seen it, and they've, like, come back. They had out-of-body experiences. So I'm like, I do believe hell is a thing. And that- when they have out-of-body experiences, do they go to hell? Yeah, they do. Take a gummy. Get on my level. It's what? a wild ride. Why would you do that on a gummy? I'd be because freaking then I, out. I know you think you'd be freaking out, but then I'm like, I'm like, I think I'm okay. You know what I mean? I don't know. It like actually makes me feel better. I'm like, I'm gonna be good, but I know it's real. Let me tell you, I was so I guess so paranoid when I went on my gummy. Or I was at that mall. Yeah. I got high and I went to the uh, theme park with my opener, Ty Colgate, and suddenly I thought about all the rides. I looked at all the kids around because it was all kids. It's SpongeBob themed, okay. and I was like oh, what if I get decapitated on one of these rides because they're not used to people my height <laughs> riding these rides. Right. And when I get high, my mind goes there, and I asked every single ride uh, uh, operator, will I get decapitated on this ride? And every single one said, no promises. I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah. Somebody just got decapitated on Magic Mountain, Space Mountain. In Yes. Disney? No, or lost an arm, lost a hand. A tall man oh. put his arm up. That's why they say don't put your arms up. And he lost an arm. At fucking Disney. Arms okay. I can handle arms. I'm keeping the arms down. There was, uh, I'm from Kentucky. Uh-huh. And at, uh, I think, I can't remember if it was Kings, Kings Island in Cincinnati or Kentucky Kingdom in Louisville. I think it was Kentucky Kingdom. Uh, there was, you know, the elevator, the, the plummet one. Yeah. There was a girl on it. And one of the cables snapped <gasps> and it chopped off her, off her feet. Oh, both feet? Both feet. Oh! Can I tell you, I was a big roller coaster person growing up. And then after my dad died, I went with one of my best friends to Six Flags in Atlanta. And I was like, let's go ride rides. Like, do the usual shit we used to do with my dad. It was like a thing. And we got on, we were front row on the um, the Gladiator ride. And I literally was like, I don't have life insurance. Like, I finally, I think if you go back and do roller coasters in your 30s, you're like, what the fuck am I doing here? Like, uh-huh. I kind of had that moment where I was like, this thing, it was a 15-year-old kid with braces on who pressed the start button on this fucking thing. You do see how young these kids are. Kids are, kids are too it. young running the show. Okay? And they're not paying attention. They're making no. a TikTok in the corner. Exactly. I mean, the kid didn't even have like probably a, a driver's permit, and they are they're gonna check my seatbelt mm-hmm. as I'm on the front of this fucking ride going 100 miles an hour. No, absolutely not. At least at the mall, I imagine it's people who live there who work there. You're not getting the carnival workers who are traveling. And sure, you know. but when when they strap me in, I and this is where like a little bit of that OCD creeps out. I'm checking that thing. Yeah. Like in 20 times, just like, yeah. okay, but if I push it in, then is it free? Okay, okay. And you know when you push it in and it, it'll lock tighter and then you panic? Like, I did. what was the ride recently? I was at Disney World not too long ago, and I'm not a Disney adult by any means, but I was doing the one where you, like, lay down, right? So you're flat, oh, the, and then the it got... Fat. Yes. The fat one. That's Six Flags, Six I think. Six Flags, maybe? Oh, oh, it was either Universal Disney Studios or Disney. doesn't own DC, I don't think. I maybe don't they do. Know. Who the fuck knows? Who the fuck knows? They own Marvel, right? That's theirs? Yes, they own Marvel. Wow. All right. Look at her. 
But I just got stuck. We were coming back into the station, if you will, and you're on your tummy, and then all of a sudden it stopped, and we were stopped for like a solid five minutes, and the wait when you've got double D tits, and you're just like hanging there. I said, no, too long. I'm done. I, after that, I was like, it's a wrap. And I wasn't fearful. I just felt, I was like, I shouldn't have been hanging that long. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. It's I'm good. I'm out. It's a wrap. Yeah. It's not an experience you need to have anymore. Ever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's. It's one of those things where we, I always go in my head. I went skydiving once, and I was like, oh, if I die doing this, I deserve it. <laughs> right. I, I'm totally pushing my luck here. Right, this right, is insane. Right. I didn't need to do this at all. But I do feel such a – I do feel a deep sense of accomplishment like this roller coaster. I mean, it wasn't that big, but in the mall it felt big where it was just like all the way up, sudden drop, upside right. down. And I felt so, honestly, more proud of myself doing that yeah. and forcing myself to go on it than I do – many other things in my life. Wait, why did you feel proud? Proud because I was scared and I was like, yeah. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. And I was like, I'm going to do it. And then you do it. And there's, it's just a real good feeling. I, I connect to that feeling. Listen, Only I've been living by that motto. If it doesn't scare you, you don't grow from it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's going to scare you a little bit. If only you could translate that to commitment and relationship. <laughs> <laughs> she oh. said it. I didn't. <laughs> So that would be amazing if you said it, yeah. just knowing me for <laughs> 20 minutes. You're like, oh, I can tell. Like, wow, read I it. read you like a book. Yeah. So when you're when you're on the roller coaster, do you think about Jesus? Do you say, please protect me? Or do you go, Jesus has better things to do right now? No, I am one with the Lord all the time. I'm always talking to Jesus. I believe he is everywhere, omnipresent. You know what I mean? I believe he's around us all the time. And I think he wants you to chit-chat with him. I mean, I, I, even the dumbest sure. thing, you what know what I mean? I'm walking to the bodega. Jesus be a fence. I really believe in like the breastplate of righteousness, the shin guards of truth, the helmet of loyalty. You know, we I, learned about are, that in I Bible. I don't know school. about any of these. Oh things. yeah, it's 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 the armor of God. You put on the armor of God every day. You get on. You put your socks of, I don't know, um, grace. You know what I mean. You put your your gloves of of chastity on, and you just start your day. Yeah, I always say. It's it's the armor of God. When you get out and you got to fight because there's demonic spirits all around, when you got to get out there into the real world, you have your armor of God. You know, nothing's going to fuck with you. It's obviously like, you know, I'm not being for real, but I also sometimes, I say, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus every day. If I see something like a bad energy, I'm like, mm, rebuke it. Get away from me. Do you? Oh, that's what you said when I first met yes. you. You I said, did. I rebuke you in the I name did. of Jesus. I said, I oh, did. And I hissed a, a, a little. Is this a Christian greeting? No, I, I hissed a little. It was a, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be speaking in tongues here in about five. So, yeah. Yeah, well, you're going to say the same thing when you get your 23 and Me results back and it finds out you're a big old Jew. And I'll be right. I rebuke okay. it. I rebuke it. I rebuke it. Yeah. Do you go to church? No, I don't go to church. I think growing up in like a super uber Christian school too, I just feel like God is around me all the time. You know what I mean? I don't know. I, I don't need to go to like an actual like church, uh, go to a service to to feel connection. Okay, so here's here's my question, and then I I is that so you you obviously know that with with Christianity there's there are people who say abstinence is a is a huge part of the thing you're talking about, or or people that say you can't be gay, or the people that say you yeah. can't listen to music. I guess in your in your own mind. Is it is this a, a metaphor for a feeling? How literal is it? How did you how did you get to decide which right. parts of this from your upbringing yeah. are for real? Yeah, and which parts are homophobia? Which parts are, uh, you know, sexually uh, uh, just uh, stupid? The same right. way your parents did, right? When they raised you, I think at the end of the day. God's going to come back and be like, y'all are all a bunch of assholes. I gave you a commandment, right? Uh -huh. Love me, put me before everybody else, and don't be an asshole. Literally, I think he's going to come back and be like, I told you not to be an asshole. And somehow, y'all all ended up being assholes. How poorly you've treated each other. Mm -hmm. So I was just trying to say, I'm not leading with any sort of judgment or any of that. I'm just like, you know, God's going to fake. He's going to come back and be like, you are all my children, and y'all acted like a bunch of assholes. Period. Period. You know? Does God, do you look like anything? I, you know, I always thought kind of like a gentle, like <laughs> a Gentile, a Gentile, for sure. <laughs> yes, a Gentile. No, I don't know. I always thought kind of like a tender man. You know what I mean? Like just a nice, maybe like 60 year old man who was like kind. You know what I mean? I don't know. I like a maybe he drove a bus or something, but was like gentle. You know, the guy that you see on like the TikToks, so they're always like, you know, this, uh, <laughs> this like LA bus driver did the right thing by stopping the bus and saving a puppy. Like mm -hmm. that kind of face. Uh, you know, maybe his name's Carl. Sure. I don't know. Just that gentle face. Beard. But, yeah, Watching for sure. Beard. Gentle beard, though. Well kept. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. White? Uh, no, not necessarily. Really? Could lean, you know, yes, well, yeah, probably white. <laughs> probably white. <laughs> <laughs> 
No, but could be also like a gentle older black man. You know what I mean? <laughs> also who would stop the bus for a puppy. So I don't know. I think we can all agree not a woman. It's, yes, I, I can agree with you there. I'm a skeptical, yeah. but not, but a, not woman. a woman. Not, not a woman. <laughs> Don't get crazy. Could if never there's be one a thing woman. that the Jews and the non-Jews <laughs> that, that we all have in common, it's that God It's that a woman could a woman. never do it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was glad Ariel was here because I have no Southern anything, but yeah. Southern Jew. Kentucky. Uh, uh, Kentucky. I love it. I love Kentucky. Kentucky is my spot. Really? Yes, I love it. I love all of it. It's, Kentucky's just a great spot. As Southerners, like if you were to meet at a party randomly, nothing uh-huh. in common, do you think like after talking you'd be like, are you from the South? Like do you think there would be uh, things that would yeah. come up? I, I think so, absolutely. Now granted, you're from, what part of Kentucky are you from? I'm from Lexington. Love Lexington. Love Lexington. One of my favorite cities. I would literally be like, oh my God, yes, Lexington, duh, UK. Like, you know what I mean? Yes, I think it's a very Southern thing. It's like if you're from the North, right? You're like, oh, New York, New Jersey, Tri-State, da-da-da-da, you go down to the shore, like it's the same shit. Sure. Yeah. There's a certain way in which, like at a party, that you just have a conversation and I think the things that you talk about and the things you bring up and the way that you converse is very yeah. different from how people in the North talk. I've never heard you say, bless his heart. I don't, you Did know. you start saying that? It would be very Bless cool. your heart. Bless it's his heart. a little too passive aggressive for me. And Southern culture is very passive aggressive, but my parents are from New Jersey. So I have a different, I have a different vernacular. I do too, because my mom's from Boston. Yeah. So I grew up saying like sneakers, you know what I mean, and stuff like that. Like it was never a tennis shoe. Like on the south, they're like, "Grab your tennis shoes." I'm like, "I don't play tennis. It's a sneaker," you know. Um, uh-huh. But just yeah, I don't. I was never bless your heart. But this is what I love about the South when people say bless your heart. We always have the joke like, uh, you know, people don't. We don't gossip in the South. We have prayer requests. You know what I mean? Like y'all, we're gonna pray for Tamara. You know, she just got her boobs done, and uh-huh. one of them didn't settle right. It's just a way to gossip. But you always say, "We're gonna pray for. We're gonna pray for." You know, her husband left her because her vagina is a little wonky you know what I mean that's that's a hundred percent a southern thing I love and I'm that. obsessed with it I love touched I love saying somebody's touched oh yeah you don't say somebody's stupid you don't say they're they're you know they're you don't say like the r word you call them touched uh-huh. okay they're that's touched. actually a new one for me I didn't think you were going to use it in that in that way how do you use it I was just thinking you were going to say like oh that I was touched that's a real oh, southern no. I, that is touching no, honey. when you call somebody touched I like that because I feel like I I always I never want to use the word crazy I feel like crazies become especially if you're talking about a lady it's like don't say crazy but touched Oh, there's some crazy touched. bitches out there though sure yeah but, but I think there's just a thing so many guys they go, oh, I cheated on my girlfriend. She got mad. She's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're like, okay, I can't say crazy. But I cheated on my girlfriend. She's a little touched about it. Yeah. That I can say. Yes, you can say that. But no, Southerners find each other. Southerners absolutely find each other. That's true. Especially Southern Jews. Yeah. We we find each other. Find one another. <laughs> find each other and they find storm the Capitol. Well, you just have... The <laughs> no, not the Jews. We, it's too much exercise. We just, like, we find... We, you know, you, 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 you find yourself hitting it off with somebody. You're not quite sure why. And then you just kind of casually go, like, oh, you know... At the synagogue, and they're like, <gasps> See, for me, me I feel, I, when I was younger, I always felt that way with kids with divorced parents. Like, I always mm. felt like the people who had divorced parents, there was some wavelength we spoke on. Mm. And, and it, that, was my, that was my culture, more than I didn't grow up with the Judaism uh-huh. or with any kind of culture. And it was, it was that. It was probably like fucked up, depressed. Broken homes. Isolated, broken homes. That's in, that is a specific culture in the way that we would go to services on Friday or you would go to church on Sunday. Mm-hmm. You go to your dad's house on Saturday. That's there you go. Good. Great yeah. observation. I like that. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Write her right. down. Um, Take her uh, out. Again, for those listening for the first time, this is the downside. If you are if you're, uh, if you want to hear more, join the Patreon. Patreon.com slash downside. Bonus episodes, live episodes. My, my comedy special, The Rats Are In Me. Check it out. Patreon.com slash downside. Speaking of downsides, I flew Delta today. And I know you have a connection to Delta. I am Delta loyal. I don't care. I you have I, a special thing because her her grandfather. Oh yes, I, how do you know that? A fact? pilot. He, I, yeah, I do my research. research. I love that. I do my but research. I don't. Yeah. So tell me. Yeah, my grandfather was chief pilot for Delta for a very long time, and he won the Dedalian Safety Award because he saved a Delta flight from crashing. Um, so he's like Rich. legit gang gang. Shout out to uh, uh, Captain Jack McMahon up in the sky. But also my it, grandma, but like, but not like in the literal like. Dead yeah, way. yeah, 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 dead. I mean, he was he's in dead. the sky he's also when he was he's alive. Right, right, he's dead. I, uh, <laughs> um, but not from crashing, thank God. Um, no, I'm just, I'm a big Delta loyalist. I only live in Delta hubs. Like, I lived in New York, I lived in LA, now I'm back in Atlanta. You have I, a special thing. I, I love Delta. My well, cat's name of- is Delta. Yeah. 
Oh my God. Oh. But do you have, because of your family, do you have like a. No, no. I don't get any sort of like uh, perks of it. I mean, I fight for diamond status just like everybody you have else. To wait on hold when you call. They don't, they don't put you. No, and I'm away. waiting to get 360. And here's the thing. Do you know about 360? Are you status people? Are you big I'm status, status person? And there was I an announcement. Over. I know. I, I did. To talk I did. About this this. fucking announcement. I know. But okay. They, do you know about the announcement? I know about the announcement. You know about the announcement. Let's just say for people listening, this is the biggest part of it is that for other than the, the way you have to qualify to become a Madonna member, they say even if you're a Madonna member, you can use the Delta Lounge 10 times a year. It's insane. Ten times, I use it 10 times a week. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, okay. They're going to cancel it. People are furious. They are, they are furious, and I have the Delta uh, Reserve card, so I like the highest Amex. Me too. Yeah, you get it. Because you get the point. The purple. purple. The purple one. The heavy purple. I have two. One personal, one business. Yeah. It's over. It's over. Just get the American Express Platinum. Okay. We'll discuss. But here's my thing. One of my dearest friends, Megan, who's just like, oh, Mississippi power lesbian, she calls me the other day. As soon as the announcement came out, she goes, Heather, this is good news for us. They're thinning out the herd. Okay. <laughs> I, like, I did have that thought, too. I was like, you know what? This is great because there's nothing more fucking annoying when you travel as much as comedians do and you're already spending the money on the fucking flights and then it's a 45-minute wait for the Cincinnati Sky Club and you're like, I, this is, I, I mean, I live in the Sky Clubs. So, fuck it. Me too. I will still make diamond status because of the amount I travel. So, let's. So, diamond will get you unlimited. Or no, 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 no. $75,000 no. on the card. Uh, okay, wait, I don't know. Um, wait, what is the new thing? It's See, here's the thing. The way they did it, though, is the way that American and United and everybody else has been doing it. It's only miles, dollars, qualification. Okay. MQDs, miles, qualified. Yeah, yeah, dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, no, if you have the card, there's something where it equals out to, like, for every $10 you spend, it's, like, 10 miles. Sure, sure. Something. We're still going to be fucked. You're just going to have to spend a lot of fucking money. Or you're going to have to buy a membership to the Sky Club. Which, if it's like a thousand bucks a year, it's worth it to me. It would be worth it, and but it's probably a write off. It, it is a write off. Sure. But if I'm going to pay a thousand dollars, because I'm always there in the morning, and this breakfast, man, yeah, this breakfast, you it's... gotta mix it up a little bit. And like New York, New York's the best one, and it stills the same. I think LA is the shit. best one. Sure. Yeah, L yeah. You go to some of these other places. <laughs> it's dire. There's <laughs> oh. nothing. I'm just well, not they, eating boiled egg, just boiled eggs every fucking morning. That's awful. There's no greens. There's, there's no, no greens. greens. There's a, there's an oatmeal and a boiled egg. I know. And I, here's my thing. If they are going to start charging people, they got to go and redo all of them. And I'm in Atlanta. That's my hub. And I have literally been at the D gates and been like, listen, this is insane. We got to upgrade. The uh, the Atlanta airport is the worst airport in America. It's the busiest airport in the world. Really? Absolutely. Oh, I'm I there five days a week. I will say I will put Dallas-Fort Worth up there with you. Because Dallas is, is terrible if you're flying Delta. It's so busy. There are like two bathrooms in the terminal. Yeah. There will oh. always be a line. Very few food options in the Delta Terminal. Yeah. That's why you got to fly out of Dallas Love. I feel like if you go anywhere, though, I've heard so many times in my life, this is the worst airport. That is the worst airport. And yeah. it's like, yeah, we all... It's almost like our infrastructure is crumbling. Yeah. <laughs> they're all bad. They're all It's pretty almost terrible. like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sometimes like, I went to Seattle, and they were like, this is the worst airport well, in the I world. Like I was Seattle's. like, Seattle's. Of course, but that was they, lovely. You have that experience. Yeah. But, but they had one bad flight, and they missed the flight to the Bahamas, and they said, this is the worst airport in no, the world. No, Atlanta world. is the worst airport. It's the busiest. Our plane train is always down. We're doing construction. There's too much carpet. They need It's just too many people. Two Delta lounges, though, right? No, there's like eight Delta lounges. But they, they need to be updated. They're not big enough. They're not big sure. enough. I it's, do, it's a shit show. I do hate when you go and there's fruit, but it's all soggy in the juices, and then you eat it, and it's a little tangy. Yeah. This was, this was was I already did this on an episode. I said, this has got to stop. I will do it again. If the banana is not edible, you didn't serve fruit. If the banana is so green, I can't even open it, that doesn't count as you gave me anything. I agree. What is it there for decoration? They put this out, and I'm like, "That's the, this is a joke." They put it out, and they go, "Hey, future people will enjoy this." Yeah, yeah. Just, just so you know, them. come back in three days. We'll have bananas <laughs> on your for you, way ready back. To go. On your way yeah, back, we'll yeah. give you a ripe banana. Yeah. So, but but uh, for you, this is. I almost apologize for doing research, but yeah. your dad couldn't be a Delta pilot. Because yes, of, because of the, the, the back in the day, they used to have a nepotism clause. So my oh. yeah, so my dad ended up work, working for Eastern Airlines. Tell me what a nepotism clause is, though, because nepotism clause basically like I could not my ch I don't have children, but my children could never work for the same company that no I worked. No matter what, to. even if they prove that wow. they're incredibly capable. Yes, I guess this was back in like the seventies, right, eighties. So uh, yes, so my dad went and got. Imagine if Judd Apatow's children couldn't be in movies. I, you you know, know, people get upset though about the nepo baby things, and I'm like, I don't give a fuck. It does not bother me. If you're talented, I just saw Maude Apatow in a cabaret on the West End, and she was Incredible. so fucking good. She could spelt her face off. Cabaret. I was it cabaret? Yes. It's so funny. I, 
I saw, yeah, I think it was Cabaret. I saw Cabaret in the West End in high school. Yeah. And it was, it was, in, it was one of the worst productions I've ever seen in my entire life. During uh, the, a naked sailor came out, you know how like the whoever owns the landlord or whatever she like sleeps around, and this guy came out na- nude, and his cock was so big he went like this and it went, <laughs> <laughs> like, like and, I, and I was sitting there with my mom, <laughs> and and it was so bad that at the end was it a prosthetic? Sorry. No, it was a raw dog. It was a okay. it was a big schlong. Okay. And uh, uh, at the end. Their metaphor for it was was as the the MC was like un cabaret. Yeah. He started putting on the pajamas for uh, you know a Holocaust. Camp. Right. Mm-hmm. And it was so bad that people started giggling. People started giggling. <gasps> and they're like, like getting on the train for the yeah. un cabaret. <laughs> and and it was one of the worst things I've ever seen. But Maude but Maud was fucking good. crushed it. Yes, it was cabaret. I like blacked out for a second. Yes, it was so incredible. She was so great. And so I walked out of there. And I literally was like, you know what? Good for these nepo babies. If you got the talent. You fucking do it. But the word if is doing the work there. Yes. 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 I, th- I think if you're bad, you certainly, uh, anyone who succeeds in show business who's bad, uh, get ready for some criticism. Exactly. But the bottom line is people like get so worked up about Nepo Babies in Hollywood. I'm like, word, be worried about the Nepo Babies in the fucking government and in the fucking yeah, infrastructure and the this, that. Like, it's At just Yale Medical School. That's, I, the, yes. that's what worries me. Yeah. That's the person who's going to operate on somebody and it matters. Yeah. Agreed. All of a sudden it's a mod app tower operating on you. But it's it's But if they want to be in like super bad six, yeah, like fucking do it. But it's also We're not saving lives. It's also this degree of like like it's like, yeah, Judd Aptow can put whoever he wants in his movie. It's That's his how movie. it works. Yeah. It's his movie. <laughs> like he, he has to be like, no. It's yeah. like bringing an opener. Exactly. It's the same. You, you bring whoever you want to open for you. Judd Apatow is just bringing his kids to open for his movies. I think it's fantastic. It's great. Yeah. Do it. Uh, great, great observation there. Yes, he's bringing his opener. And it's Maude and Iris. Is he the other child? I, I think know Iris. The other one's name. Well, I was blown away. I literally was like, Maude, that was like, I was, I was blown away. She has a phenomenal voice. She crushed it. So good for, th- good for the Apatow. <laughs> good for the Apatow. Good to see them finally have a come up. <laughs> good for them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so your dad, he ended up flying for a different airline? No, he never flew professionally. So he went and ran the lavatory truck at Eastern Airlines, which is now defunct. And that's how he met my mom in the Miami International baggage claim. My mom was a ticket agent, and my dad heard there was a hot new redhead working there. And my mom's 12 years older than my late father, so he went down there and flirted. And my mom found out what department he was working in the next day, called him, and then the rest is history. So no, my dad oh, my dad was a private pilot, like flew for fun. But my dad was in the mortgage biz forever. And then he flew and had like a, a hangar at a airport in Atlanta, but no, he was never a professional he pilot. Flew, you were on a plane a lot where your dad was flying. Yes, yeah, we were. We were the kids, like you know, people went on road trips or you know had lake houses. We had a tiny little Cessna four seater, and my dad would literally he'd pick us up on Fridays at three o'clock from school. We would have our shit in a duffel bag, and we would hop in this tiny little airplane. We'd fly down to like Hilton Head. Cool. Yeah, uh, being a pilot, I feel like it's wild. It would. It would. You'd feel. If my dad flew me somewhere, mm-hmm. you'd be like, "Thank I, you for spending time with me." First, sure, yeah, but I feel like I would respect him, <laughs> even even if I even with all the struggles we have. Yeah, if we then went into the sky yeah. where I'm, I'm, I have natural fear. I'm in the mm-hmm. sky, and the only person preventing us from crashing is my father. There would just like it, it, it would make you're a king. Yeah, you're flying the plane. Yeah, you know magic. I, I feel like pilots would have a big ego because of this. Well, and I think pilots nowadays don't get enough credit. Like, my big thing is if you're walking off a flight, the first person I say thank you to, obviously, to the flight flight attendants, but I always literally either try and shake the pilot's hand because I'm a pilot's, like, kid, Mm -hmm. but I'm always like, thank you so much. Like, when people just walk off a fucking flight and they have not acknowledged our Lord and Savior, the pilot, what are we doing here? The man in the sky. Middle of the flight, I'm trying to get in the cockpit, say, let me give you a massage. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, exactly. (laughs) Exactly. Okay, okay, but, but no offense to pilots Mm -hmm. these days with the computers what is being a pilot you press a button wow okay okay what are they doing the machine taking off the headset and leaving no i'm kidding no but i mean you know if you're flying and say you're flying into seattle right and you've got zero visibility they gotta know how to land that bitch Mm -hmm. those computers are not just running the show they still have to physically do a zero visibility landing there's also very little way for them to predict turbulence and so they have to figure it out on the fly <laughs> um, of like going above or below those those little pockets of turbulence. So that's 
And to anybody listening who is afraid of flying, just want you to know that my dad always said the best thing. Pilots, you have to remember, if you're getting nervous on an airplane, the staff and the crew want to get there just as safely as you want to get there. So when people lose their shit and they're like, oh, it's out of control, the pilots also want to have control of the Sure, airplane. unless it's that one pilot in Germany who took down the plane on purpose because he was suicidal. In that case... And that's why you got to have probably two pilots. Didn't. <laughs> that's why you got to have two pilots. <laughs> and in, in, in China this year... Yes, that did also happen. Did you see that? Uh uh-uh. Oh, it was a commercial plane. The pilot took it down. But you know what? That could, you could be sorry. To, sorry to for yeah. those listening who were scared of flying. I'm sorry <laughs> to reintroduce it to you. <laughs> it's incredible though, because when I first started touring, I, 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 I wasn't scared of flying, but I had a little bit of thing. I butterflies. have almost nothing now. I yeah. fly so much now. It has almost. My father hasn't flown for like a decade. Really? It, it just who knows what started in him. His he had a near he had a scary flame thing, uh, but 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 now I'm so over it. Yeah. I I remember back in the day, if I heard noises, I would just be like, "What was that noise?" Right. Mm-hmm. Um. So you when you land the plane, you you go up to the pilot and do you say like, "My dad was a pilot." No, or? no, no, no. I literally just say, "Thank you so much." I just like like make eye contact and give like a firm handshake. You ever go like, "Hey, great job." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes way to, way to go. I'm not as casual, but I'm usually like, "That was fantastic. Thanks for the safe flight." I'm just yeah. <laughs> cheesy like that. No, that's great. But it's, it's really important to me. But that's also like when you come from a line of like pilots, like that's what you do. You know what I mean? And I, I will find myself telling the flight attendants, you know, I was rejected by Delta to be a flight attendant. I went through like the whole thing. I when I didn't after my dad died, I was living in LA. I picked up my life. I moved back to Atlanta because I was like, oh, I got to help my mom, my sister. We're like, we got to figure out what the new normal is. Yeah. Because my dad died very quickly of cancer, and it was very sudden. So then I was like, well, I guess you know what am I going to do while my comedy career is on pause? Uh-huh. I'm gonna become a Delta flight attendant. And then I went for like the interview. Really? Yes. I, Cause I was like, at least I get to travel around. And I was like, I was in my early twenties. So I was like, I can have some new experiences. Right. Sure. And I was like, I can still do comedy on the side, but then I can fly during the week or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I imagine and I, subconsciously, it's also a way to be close with your dad. Absolutely. A connection. And then I got rejected from the program and I didn't even go in telling them like who my grandfather was. I literally went in and it was just like, Oh, I'm, I'm I mean, this is fantastic. This is like an audition. I'm going to crush it. I showed up like at 7am at the Delta headquarters. I had the suit on. I had the, you know, the ascot around the neck. Like, I was playing the part. And then I didn't get the job. No and I was devastated. Know why? But how exactly, what happened? Did you serve peanuts when they said no peanuts? No, no, no. Like, literally, you have to go through a rigorous testing. Do you know it's easier to get into Harvard than to become a Delta flight attendant? Easier to get into Harvard. Okay. Yep. I, yeah, okay. it is. Uh, you're you're going to have to break it down because I, I, if yes. I'm being honest, and be honest too, you don't believe that's true? Now, it's different. Now, okay, but I'm going to tell you it's different. The American flight attendants and the United flight attendants, other airlines, they're unionized, right? So once you're in, you're never getting out. Is uh-huh. Delta, Delta it's private. Yeah. So it is, it's, it's real deal. Listen, I put on a great razzle-dazzle show, and I- I have no doubt. Not, I don't even buy- could not even believe that I didn't get it. Do you know why? Do you like? Do you get a test score on the way back? I have comments? a feeling I worked for. I was a concierge in LA for a, a high-profiled family, and I brought that up. And I'm not going to say who the family was here, but I think that that. Um, I think that that was like a red Osama flag. Osama bin Laden? <laughs> basically. Basically. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this yeah, is no, the one honest? thing. The no, one requirement. I think, I think that was it. I think that it was something like the, the, that they thought it was sketchy. But the irony of it is, so then I, so the comedy starts working, and then Delta sponsored like my first tour, and then I the flight attendants invited me in to do flight training school, and I got to like jump down the slide, do all the thing, and spend a day with all the Delta flight attendants. Is the slide fun? The slide is so much fun. Yeah, maybe you enjoyed Makes the you slide too crash. much. They said, "Oh, she yeah. wants to have this yeah. crash." Yeah, but they do make you one of the drills when you're like auditioning. If you want to be a flight attendant, is they set up, they put you in these like scenarios. So they set up the cart, right? So you have to fill the cart with like all the snacks, all the drinks, all this yada yada, and you have to work in a team. Well, I thought I was like, I'm natural born leader. Of course, I'm going to delegate this. Like, you do the <laughs> the sun chips, you do the peanuts, and maybe I was too bossy. I don't fucking know, but I was being watched like a hawk, and I did not get the job. But listen, everything turns out the way it needs to be, right? Would you? I mean, not always, not for the people in that flight in China, but. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. Okay. Also, Malaysia. What happened there? <laughs> Have you been yeah. watching the documentaries on Malaysia? That's hey. also, I can't put my finger on it. Um, well, just that it disappeared. That's disappeared. the one that disappeared, right? Yeah. Yeah, but a couple documentaries came out about it. And, and they think that was a suicidal pilot, too. They do, but there's also something like, I'm just getting a gut feeling something's not right there. You know what I mean? 
What do you think is still up there? What do you think it was? I think I think maybe an alien abduction, or those people are like sitting on a base somewhere, being held hostage. I don't know. I just I don't trust it. What's more likely, alien abduction or a pilot who went through a divorce (laughs) and was sad? (laughs) Most likely the first. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, maybe the alien was going through a divorce, and that's why they abducted maybe. Just have yeah. some more friends. Just have some more friends up there in the ethosphere. Yeah. Would you ever get your pilot's license? Yeah, that's a goal of mine, but it's the amount of hours that you have to spend. Like, you need – how many hours do you need? It's something insane. I mean, but it's, I, it's harder to become a flight attendant than get a – Pilot get a pilot yeah, apparently so. Well, you know, there's a pilot shortage. So anybody who's out there, I'm going to look directly to camera. Anybody uh, who's out there and wants to become a pilot, there's a major shortage of pilots in the United States. So that's if you're looking for a career path and you like the, to fly the friendly skies, you should go to pilot school. And air traffic controllers too. Air traffic controllers. Yeah. Huge shortage we're because of Reagan. Daily. We listen to the daily. <laughs> we are listening to the we're daily. We're listening to the daily. Well, Ariel and I have the same okay, media consumption. I'm also from Lexington, Kentucky, and I think it was when I was in high school there was a, a horrific plane crash at our airport oh, shit. because the air traffic controller was overworked and yeah. exhausted. It was before they had put in all of either. They hadn't put in these regulations about how long they're allowed to work or they just ignored them. And this air traffic controller was exhausted, overworked, told the, the plane to take off on the wrong runway. It was too short. It crashed. It killed, you know, 80 people or something like that. It killed everybody except for the co-pilot. Uh, and of course it's, it's out of the Lexington airport. So everybody knew somebody on that yeah. plane. Mm. So I got very invested in air traffic controllers and well, making they just, sure that they get enough sleep. Didn't they just say in that interview that it's something like th- there's like four forty, like some insane amount of close calls every yes. hour. Yes. yes. That's Are you listening to daily too? Yes. Are we all yes. listening? We're all okay. Is everyone okay. listening yeah. to Everyone's the daily? Uh, that, that made my asshole pucker a little oh. bit. Oh yeah. Yeah. Because you think about how much you fly, and you're like, was I on one of those close calls? Yeah. I I just also think I'm constantly baffled, honestly, that there's not more accidents, given how every other aspect of airports seems to be. Every time my Delta app crashes, I go, well, it's only a matter of time before whatever the fuck, like, like the, you know, they, they can't get the ticketing right, they can't yeah. get the bags right, we're constantly being deplaned. It's amazing that there aren't more accidents. I agree. And hearing that thing, you're like, <laughs> we're close, <laughs> we're, we're close. We're getting closer and closer. Listen, knock on some wood real hard right now. You know what I mean? I'm getting on a flight tomorrow. Where are you going? I'm going, but going back home to Atlanta. But then I'm going over the seas in a, in, on Friday, you know? Yeah, I did want to. I did want to uh, bring up because because I know you've talked about the two. I should say for the listeners because oh. I've talked about it a bunch. Uh, I had, uh, my my girlfriend had her eggs frozen, and it was a success. Great, a lot of eggs. Mouse I up. found out at this this show this uh, horrible weekend I had. Uh, I was talking about the eggs freezing. None of the jokes were working, <laughs> but someone said uh, Jewish eggs. Worth more. Go for a lot. Go for a lot more money mm-hmm. because of all the fucking diseases we have. Uh, you know, and and so who so knows? like like the the pr- um the the eggs go for more because if you if you got a Tay-Sachs free egg, uh, t- wow, you are yeah, yeah, yeah. you can get some money. It's really wild. When I did it, we only have one embryo. My husband and I have one embryo, but like I, they, I mean, it's wild what they can tell you. And I I didn't expect when the doctor called to tell us like what you know after doing the genetic testing and everything mm-hmm. what was healthy. She's like, yeah, you have one daughter. I'm like, well, you already know the <laughs> sex. They're like, yeah, it's a daughter. I'm like, that's fucking crazy. Well, now that you know that you're Jewish, you can sell it for I a know. lot more. <laughs> I know, I know, but I don't know where she is. And that is like I've never I I asked my husband I was like where is where is our daughter like I don't know what fridge she's in I don't know what freezer she's in What's, you know, Atlanta Atlanta I'm gonna guess that she's at the 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 clinic where I had this done but I was like we should just probably call about that because I we never got like a paperwork like she's in freezer A like I genuinely don't know where she is Would you pay extra because I feel like this should be a service of like a you know how you have a find my headphones Yeah. Find my, find my embryo. embryo. Yeah. yeah. Not a bad so idea. Beeps and you just follow the beeps. Yeah, you shark have, tank it. You get those commercials, it's eleven PM. Do you know where your embryo is? Yeah. Don't you do you ever feel any anxiety? Do you cause it was a lot of work, right? To, it's a ton of work. Yeah. Because you did it because because we hired uh, uh, a a nurse to give the shots. Oh, and I we, did it I myself. Mean, it was and that's I mean, so these shots uh, my my girlfriend was finding out about everything and we watched the tutorial and yeah. and the moment the moment I saw the tutorials, I said, oh, okay, I'll pay for a nurse to do this. Because yeah. it's going to be me and her. Right. And she talked about me maybe helping with the shots. And you were like, I no. saw 30 seconds of the video, and I said, 
what are you fucking nuts? Why not? We're not doing this. It's just, it's just like the number of steps. We're, we're neither of us are are very inclined towards this kind of stuff to begin with. Just, just technical. Uh, uh, and it's just why? Why you're not would I do given this? just like a syringe? It's not like you just get a needle filled with the medicine. You have to mix the drugs. Mix the and I'm drugs. like, I'm a civilian. I just re- figured out how to like sign up to vote, like <laughs> like not too long ago. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? So the first time I did it, I Facetimed one of the nurses, and she walked me through. But you're taking 20 milliliters of this, 10 here, six here. This one's refrigerated. This one is air not. bubble. Worry about yeah. We'd be. W- yeah, I, uh-huh, my uh-huh. thing was like, you, you're supposed to let a little out. That lets you know the air bubble's gone. Right. The way that my mind works, I'd be letting so much out, being like, oh, let's just make sure there's no air bubble. And by the end, we'd have no more liquid in the fucking thing. And if there's no liquid, and then you got to remix it, and then you got to, it's just, it's insane. Like, you you should be an actual chemist to be able to do this. This was the part, this was actually the part of the video where I immediately, I was like, oh no. It said, like, you inject it and, like, s- like squeeze it, and then as you inject it, like, let go of it gradually. And I was like, I can't. For all I know, I'm injecting it, and it's going into the wrong part. Of, I, yeah. can't even, I don't even have words of where it could go. Also, imagine your girlfriend letting you touch her here, letting you letting <laughs> just her just grab touch, the fupa. Just punch, yeah, just yeah. Pinch that. Yeah, just pinch that fupa. Yeah, I did it myself. And then when it came time to give you, they give you like it's called the trigger shot, which is what you do the night before uh-huh, uh-huh. you do the retrieval. I my doctor was also like, go have a drink. You know what I mean? She was like, go have a glass of wine. That's the only way you're gonna get through this. So I went out and got got like a little drunk with. You were my allowed friends. to drink. She, I was allowed to drink. They told her don't drink. No, my doctor was literally like, she's like Heather. I mean, don't go out and like go, be ripping like Jaeger bombs. But she's like, you can have a glass of wine or two when you're doing this because it's gonna be fucking miserable. They told her no drinks, no pot. It was miserable. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I was I had I had some wow. some booze, but not a lot. But I had like a glass of wine, and my girlfriend did it in a in a public bathroom because we went to a nice restaurant the night before. And my <laughs> friend was literally like, "I'll give you the trigger shot because you have to do it like you, you know." Have to explain if anyone came in like it's not heroin. Yeah, it's, it's not heroin. We're not doing anything weird. It's just fertility. But honestly, you in a are women, doing something weird. But also sense. in a women's restroom, if you were like fertility, they just they don't give like a shit. Women it. would never think that you're doing. No, drugs. everybody would just be like, "Do you need help? Do yes. you need more hands? Guys, you don't yes. know this, Flashlight. but a women's restroom, someone's injecting themselves. Absolutely at any time. Yes. 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 Um, so yeah, it was wild. And then yeah, so we have one daughter. Did it, did it work the first time around? Or it no, didn't. I had to do multiple rounds of it because I have low egg count. So I had to beef myself up on testosterone for like two months. So I literally like was yeah, I was like growing a dick for two months. It was insane. I was horny. I was angry. I was yelling at everybody. I was just dry. I had road rage. Like it was nuts. So I was on testosterone, literal tea. I put on gel. You put, put like gel patches on your shoulders, and I put gel like um, on the inner thighs because that's the best part. For for it to absorb. Huh? So I was on testosterone for like a month and a half. Then I had to do vaginal suppositories for like another month and a half. And then I finally did one round of uh, the shots, didn't work. And then I do another round of the shots and it finally worked. When it didn't work, because I had a f- such a fear. I mean, this was not easy. Yeah. Uh, easy for me, but hard. For, I mean, because it wasn't testosterone, but it was estrogen, and it, at least for her. Yeah. And it was hard. It was hard. Yeah. It was very challenging. And I had such a fear. That like you know there wouldn't be any eggs yeah or you know they got the eggs and then the next day they tell you how many are viable and I had right. this fear like when she's like oh the email came in I was holding my breath because I was like yeah. if if this wasn't successful right that I can't imagine you doing this again anytime it's gnarly soon. on your physical body your mental body I mean yeah. essentially you are beefing yourself up like you're pregnant and then when you're coming off the drugs post egg retrieval uh-huh. I basically like you know how like a lot of women postpartum lose their hair right so all my hair fell out and then I put on like 30 pounds your tits are sore and you're like you're really swollen in your you know uh-huh. ovarian area so you look pregnant and then you're like I don't have anything to show for it it's makes you fucking crazy but now did she when she was going into it did she know that because they usually can tell like oh it looks like you got a, a good batch of eggs they said I, I believe at the beginning they said not bad, but they said, yeah. oh, it's not great. Uh, it's not necessarily great. Okay. And she's 33. Yeah. And uh, the success, it was it was uh, a, a lot. It was a very successful thing overall. Right. But in the beginning, there was enough of a fear of like, oh, good that we did this now. Uh-huh. Yeah. And like we were looking at, you know, because she wanted me to be there for the operation. We were just trying to see if there was any kind of calculation of making, sh- of trying to, so it would happen during a weekday. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Which ultimately, you know, it's it's impossible to predict. I mean, trying to time this thing was insane. But it was it was urgent enough that it was like I don't want to wait till next year to plan a you know two weekends mm-hmm. off or anything. Yeah, it's gnarly. And I mean, I probably have to do another round of it in December. I'm going to take off December, and I'm like as a backup. Uh, yeah, because I only have one embryo, so I'm now like. 
Ugh. Like the thought of having to put myself through that, it took me a year to finally feel like normal in my body again. And now I'm like, fuck me. God. So I'm just like, I was my husband, I was like, told him last night, I was like, okay, we might have to do this again in December. He's like, oh God. How long He's, is the process from when you start to when they do the retrieval? Well, for, if, if you're a fertile myrtle, like it'll probably take you, you could just start the shots and it's like whatever, it's like 14 days. Um, and it's different for everybody. But I had to do so much prep beforehand because I had low eggs that that's what really, I was like, juiced the fuck up i was like an mma fighter going in for weigh-in like i was gnarly dude i was so fucking gnarly i mean i was yoked and i already have like broad shoulders and traps i was yoked i was horny like i get it i get, get guys did you get facial hair i didn't get facial hair um but i did get like acne yeah mm. uh-huh oh yeah oh yeah dude <laughs> yeah i was just like going up around my house like picking up furniture and just like like fucking raging did it did it give you any did you go like Oh, uh, men, they have to struggle. Yeah, I absolutely say, like, I, I have a joke about that. I'm literally like, I finally understand why men are so, like, angry and horny at the same time. Like, I mm. feel, and I'm like, you know what? The man, the straight man has been put down for so long. Now that I've been on testosterone, I get what you guys are going through. You can't fucking control it. I get it. Yeah. I get it. But wouldn't yeah. it be fair? Okay, so wouldn't it be, I feel like it would be useful. I'm sure Republicans will get excited about this idea where all men have to do estrogen uh -huh. patches for, for a little. All women have to do some testosterone. Yeah. I feel like. Sure. A little, uh, a little would be tootsie a for all of us. I would do that for a Patreon. Me and, me and my <laughs> co-host do Get on estrogen, estrogen for a month. Patches. Yeah. <laughs> and slowly it changes to like. Oh. And you just feel no difference and you realize. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I should probably take some testosterone. <laughs> it takes enough testosterone to install an air conditioner and then we can get off of it. Yeah, but it's wild. It's really wild. And I had so much more respect for my girlfriends who did it. And I was like, oh, fuck. And then the whole thing is, like, you spend your all your 20s, right, not trying to get pregnant. And then when you're, like, actually look into it, you're like, oh, fuck. Why did nobody tell me? Mm -hmm. This is the thing is that nobody tells women until they're in their 30s to look into their fertility. Because you're, like, trying, you know, you're just dicks everywhere. You're just trying to not get pregnant. And then when you, like, get to that age, I'm like, why did nobody tell me I had low eggs? Sure. Because I've had low eggs forever and nobody told me. And so you could have just been... I could have done this in my 20s. You could have just been stresslessly raw-dogging in your 20s. A freaking men. Yeah. Or, or yeah, I, part of it's like, get your eggs frozen. Why not get your eggs frozen when Earlier. you're... Earlier. Yeah, when, when you don't have a job. Right. Where, like, a, you know, well, full-time thing. you can afford it, probably. Well, sure. Yeah. But, yeah, it should, you know, they should just, when you turn 18... You just you go and register to vote, and they take out your eggs. Sure. And they just freeze them. That'd I think that, honestly, you they hit the nail on the head. You so register to vote. They take out your eggs. They put them in a freezer somewhere at a Wendy's, mm -hmm. and then you're just like good to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. At the age before you're allowed to vote, that they not do this to you. It's mandatory. <laughs> uh, so wait, when you got your eggs, you uh -huh. uh, do you mind me asking how That's many eggs I, you got? I, so we went into it as a kind of a. That's the personal part. I'm like, how many eggs? That's fine. That's even, fine. Did you say that? So it was a full Hail Mary. So I wasn't even going to do, after the second round, they were like, my eggs were not reacting to the medicine. And I had already been on, you know, the vaginal suppository, testosterone, all this shit. And how then, upset were you? Were you, I mean, were you devastated? Well, were you just like annoyed? Well, the funny thing was, I did this to be proactive and because I, I knew I was about to go back on tour. And I was like, oh, I should probably do this because I'm, uh, I'm 36. And then when they, you go in and they were like, the, my doctor was like, I know it can feel like a death and I was like who the fuck died I'm so <laughs> confused right now because I wasn't doing it to actively get pregnant I was like I'm gonna get some embryos because I know I'm aging and I'm getting older and I have a low egg count let me do this to be proactive and then you know so then when you go in there and they're like you have no eggs you're like wait what because you know I wasn't in the mind frame to be like we're trying to we're actively trying to get pregnant right now yeah 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 and then she said it was like a death and then I got very confused um but no so we went into the actual Finally, they're like, listen, we think there's one viable egg. But you know, in order to get even one viable egg, you really need like 10 viable eggs. So we went in and they were able to find two other eggs. So they pulled out three and then one ended up being perfectly sound. So I have like one angel miracle baby that's sound. And was it just lucky that that then you had your, your husband uh, uh, come on the egg? Yeah, yes, exactly, yeah. Well, we already knew we were going to make an embryo. So we already knew... We but it's not always successful, right? No, it's not always successful. And that was the thing. So when they went in thinking they were only going to find one, and then they found three, our odds got higher. Does that oh, make sense? okay. And only one of those three... And one of those three ended up being, like, genetically good, healthy, all that. Do you so remember that, waiting for that result and just Well, I like, kind of... I knew, I knew that it was, like, a 5% chance or something that we'd even get anything. And then when the doctor called, she was like, we were able... 
eight, we were actually able to get three, so this makes your chances higher. I was like, fuck yeah. But now even with one embryo, when you try and go put that embryo back in, it's only like a 40% chance. But I've had- 40%? Forty oh, percent. Fuck, it's, man. Yeah, to it's have wild. Because, because to do it, you have to make the decision of, all right, we're gonna have. You have yeah. to make that full, you f- all the way in. Yeah, all the way. And in. then, oh, that really fucking sucks, dude. So you only got, you just did eggs, right? Your girlfriend just did eggs. Yeah, you didn't make did it. Oh my cum. Not we put on my them. cum in a different country. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <I can't. laughs> well, my husband went in, and like you have to go in, and basically you're jerking off in like, like a medical office. Yes. And the best is so when you're doing the egg retrieval. There's there's men who are dropping off samples of semen all the fucking time, and I got so you're sitting in this waiting and room. They're like, you don't have an appointment, or yeah, yeah they're you're like, you're just jerking here. off, Carl. Get out of here. <laughs> but it's so funny because there's like a, you know a, a medical office like filled with women, and you're having to get your blood drawn like every 24 hours, right? When you're going through the process. Yeah. So these guys walk in, kind of this like doggy bag of shame, and literally like kind of look around like they want to be you know anonymous, and every woman's like, just put it at the front. Nobody gives a fuck. <laughs> like we're not even looking at you. We're we're juiced up. But the the one of the nurses said that I you know I got really close to the nurses they were like so we have a lot of older guys that come in a lot and they will not bring in real semen samples they'll spit in the cup and because of HIPAA violations they're like obviously can't tell the other person that so they just have to say it's an inconclusive semen sample so it's like older guys who have these young wives are on their fifth (gasps) wife or whatever they don't want to have any more kids so they'll say they're going to the fertility clinic and they're just like spitting in a cup and the nurses will be like are you gonna fucking tell your new wife that you just don't want to have kids Kids. Like they're fucking scamming, scamming the system. And so they would tell the wife, oh, your husband's sperm. And we got an inconclusive result, so we'll have to try again. And then they basically wear him down. Yeah. And the nurses are like, oh, yeah, we have these old guys come in here all the fucking time oh, on their third wife. Brutal. Brutal. I right? Can see that's my dad so doing upsetting. that. <laughs> I can see so my dad brutal. Doing that. But then, yeah, when you go in to actually jerk off into the cup, I was like, Jeff, how was it? And he's like, I went in there with my Bluetooth. I let them know what I like. I was like, okay, <laughs> Jeff. Yeah, he said he brought his like his Beats by Dre like Bluetooth speaker. Were they would if has anyone ever said, can I bring? What if the wife said, I want to I want to go in with him? I'm sure they'd let you. It's okay. very, it, yeah. I mean, they, they fucking did it on an episode of the Kardashians. Like, Travis Barker and Courtney were getting, were trying to get semen, so she went in there and, like, jerked him off. Here's the thing, though. This is wild. When you're getting the semen sample, though, you can't have any lotion, because that will taint it, and you have to, you can't, when you jerk off into the cup, you can't, like, put the cup on your dick to get the sample. You have to, like, jerk off and, like, jump into the cup. Oh, like, no. Like, you have to get it in, but you can't touch the rim of the cup, because sure. then it's contaminated. Can you have So there's sex? a lot of rules. Can you have sex and then pull out? I don't think so. I don't think you can have penetration. No. That's a that's a lot. You're gonna. It's a dry hand job. I don't know. I think I think it's a dry hand job. I would. I would do it like a carnival thing. I would rather over there and I'd be like, all right, let's try. I would rather have sex than give a hand job. I would rather do anything than give a hand job. Yeah. I've t- I've told my husband if he ever wants a hand job, I'm okay with him going to like a, like one. A rub and tug place. I told Tova that you fine. talked about that policy it's and she totally did not agree fine. with it at because all. Because I just I just don't want to do it. There's I'll do other things. I just if you're ever craving a hand job, it's yeah. not coming from me. I I don't feel like I've been a, a requ- uh, there's been a hand job request in no, a really long time. No, because your husband's hand not fourteen. Fantastic. Hand jobs are way undervalued. They're they're they're, they're the, the <sighs> thing. Most blowjobs end in a hand job. If we're being honest, the fine leaf ended. It ends in a hand job. So when do you prefer a hand job? When are you hot for a hand job? Set well, the scene. Here's what I like about a hand job: is it's it's convenience. It's uh, uh it's quick. It's 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 not the way I do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's like it's just if there's a, it's you gotta go. Yeah. Or, or it's it's just like a little it's a little favor for me. A hand job allows the capacity of uh this is it's not selfish. Sometimes you just it's just my turn, and sometimes it's just your turn. Sure. Yeah. Hand job is very much like. Oh fuck this fucking thing! You know you've been on testosterone. I've been on you're just like please. Yeah, just let jerk this... me off. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Oh. There's a lot of things we do though as married people. You know, it's sure. like, you know, it's a blow job. It's a job. Yeah. It, there are days where it's a job, and you do it, mm-hmm. but it's a job. You're so you're saying, and you truthfully mean this that that if your husband wanted a hand job and he he'd say, hey, I'm gonna go to the parlor, yeah, get a quick handy, you'd be like, cool. Yeah, there's no emotions there. It's just a because you, you know what? Here's the thing: the first time I've only you had, would agree. I've only had a couple. Well, of, yes, what? yeah, a little bit. I've only had a couple of massages in my life, and I remember the first time I got a massage. I remember the man had my he had my head in his hands, and he was doing something to my neck. And I remember thinking he could just kill me right now. 
And then I remember thinking, I'd be fine with it because that's how at peace I am. And after he finishes with your body, there is a part of me that was like, wait, you're not going to make me come? Like you just made my whole body feel this good and relaxed and you're not going to make me come? How dare you? And that that was the moment where I was like, Oh yeah, every massage should end in you coming. It's, I'm it's, fine with it's, it. It's not a it's not an emotional thing. It's not a cheating thing. It's just a this, your body feels so good right now. I Almost. got a happy ending massage in Amsterdam, and yeah. it's ninety nine percent the same. Yeah, it's just at the end. Yeah, yeah. Most marital massages end in a happy ending. You know what I mean? Sure. I mean that's that's for sure. But see, I love massages, and I was actually. <laughs> Actually, it, it, over here in the East Village, um, I, th- somebody tried to do a happy ending. And I was in the same room as my sister. Oh. And I jumped up. And I literally was like, what the fuck is happening? And I just screamed, I'm late for an appointment and ran out. Can you give me the number? For yes, that? I will. Absolutely. <laughs> I will absolutely give you the number. You think, it's on you first. Think, uh, Shaki would be okay all the way around. Uh, it's, it's, it's I don't a know. Bit more. I don't know. It's a little bit more. It's a, I don't know. It's a good question. Would you? I love massages. I will let like the line cook at a Panda Express dip their hand in some hot oil and like rub me down. I don't give a shit. Sure. I get rubbed. I, that is my my luxury item that I, I probably get a deep tissue massage once a week. That is my happy mm-hmm. place. That's what I spend my queen on. That is what I do. Um, but I don't. And if Jeff was getting a rub and tug, I don't know. Ugh, just don't tell me about it. Just so just leave me in the dark. You know what I mean? No, I if I know what no, if I know about it, then I'm gonna go down there and start cracking some skulls. Cause I didn't ever think I was a jealous person, but I am like just don't. But if he's like, yeah, I'm gonna if, just just keep me in the dark. Don't ever tell me. It's like when people tell wild. people's systems are all wild. They are, they are wild, right? If Tova went, would you be would you, how would you feel? I think I'd I think I'm very at peace with that. I'd say I'd say I could use the help. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're exhausted. You know what I'm I mean? I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted Traveling too. All the time. But I don't want my husband getting jerked off by somebody else. I don't know why. I want him to look that's me in okay. the eyes. I think that's what, a what if reasonable. He looked, what if thing. what if you were there so he could look you look in, me the in the eyes? eyes? Okay, the other then person actually, does that'd the be nice. oh. She's got just a can full of coconut oil, and mm-hmm. she's just doing her thing. Yeah, but I'm like, honey, eyes here, yeah, eyes here, honey. She's doing the work, and you get the reward. Let's talk about the Giants win last night. Like I'll be fine. Yeah, yeah. Let's go on to our next segment. This has got to stop. This has got to stop. Do you have something that's got to stop? I have something that's got to stop. Tell us. And this may only be very specific to Southern people. And I'm hoping that you'll understand this. But I've got, we've got to stop with the smocking on the children. Do you know about Southern smocking? It's a big trend in the South. No. And, and there are these women, okay, who do you, okay, smocking clothes is um, where they basically put their kids, their Southern kids in like doilies. All right. It's like a very gentle kind of linen fabric. And the little boys will have like the tall white socks and you have the little saddle shoes. It's a very big trend in the south and everybody that i went to fucking college with puts their kids in this fucking smocking shit look it up because i look up smocking see. I mean, I see. It's southern so smocking. it's like a f- it's a fashion thing it's a fashion and thing and it's recent this is a recent it's trend. Re- i have started to notice it more recently and i have a bunch of sorority sisters who started like smocking clothing companies it's just like sweeping the south that everybody puts their little cherub children in smocking outfits and they look like ghosts from the fucking 1800s <laughs> you're telling me there's nothing cuter than a baby in jeans Okay, so it's this may be too niche for you. What era? No, 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 no. This is great. <laughs> Wait, hold on. <laughs> why? Why is that? Going I mean, on? why is that your sponsored ad, <laughs> Marco? <laughs> <laughs> With, so there's a lot of pictures of like kids. And then in the middle, there's like one of, of like the biggest titted woman with a sponsor. Yeah, yes. <laughs> and it's a sponsor. So I guess they're yeah. like, this This is what you were looking for, wasn't it? So like if you if you think about the pilgrims, what like a pilgrim woman uh-huh, would wear. Uh-huh. They've made miniature versions of that for children. And they're all over the South. Wow. It's they're kind of cute. No, you you backtrack that statement. They're like, they're like an old like a black like a black and white photo you'd see this kid in. It's basically like a christening outfit if you've yeah, ever seen yeah, anybody yeah. in that like white christening dress. But they wear that year round. I don't get it. I don't understand. It's got to stop because I love a baby in jeans. You're telling me there's nothing cuter than a little infant and in a pair sure. of blue jeans or like like a like I love sure, to getting see ready to people. work on the railroad. Exactly. I love children in like adult outfits. They just make me laugh. It does feel a little bit like costumey or like if I saw like uh, uh, the Amish. It feels like like the Amish would wear yes. smocking. It feels like for people who live too far away from town. Yes, they don't want to go in for their baby clothes, so they just take the potato sack and they rearrange yes. it, and then and they and then they put it the name Millie on it. Yeah. Now it would make sense if it's just an Easter look, 
right? You're dressing up for the Lord. It does Just your feel Easter very look. Easter. Uh-huh. But this is 24 7. They got the Halloween smocking, the Christmas smocking. I mean, these kids have got to be fucking freezing their asses off. They're wearing nothing but a doily and a cheesecloth. <laughs> I'm very upset about it. I'm sorry. No, uh, that's the right energy for this segment. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But that's a good, this has got to stop. That's great. Um, let me see if I, I think I wrote one down. My, this has got to stop. Do you have a this got to stop already? Yeah, I got one. What yeah, you got to stop? All right, look. We've come so far with technology. Yes. We can do so many things. Why? The thing that has to stop is contact lenses being indiscernible of which side, of whether they're inside out or not. Because you put it in inside mm. out and it destroys your eye. And then you try it again because you go, oh, you'll, I'll take it out. Maybe there's something on it. You're looking for a lash or something that's on it. A piece of dust. You put it back in. Ruins you. You take it out. It's like five times before you think to yourself, let me flip this inside out. Mm. I did not know that, that they way. weren't reversible. They're not reversible. And there's no way to tell... Just we there's so many things we can do. Why can't you just put a little like this way, like a Left little or right arrow, on just it. something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something. Twice in my life, I've Tell gotten me. contact lenses. Like I went through the whole process, and they showed me how to put it in. The next day, I tried doing it. I couldn't after five minutes. I couldn't get it in my eye, and the rage that I felt yeah. at that like frustration, I was like, and I I said no, and twice. I so I can't even imagine. I mean, your anything. eyeballs. It's all. It's just such a specific. It's, it's, it's it, When anything is wrong with your eye, as you know, you've got this sty that oh seems to not go away because I was here last time. <laughs> I've had this sty. I have, I, it's the worst sty I've ever had in my life. Like, I didn't even it, notice it until you said sty, and now I see thanks, it. Thanks, Ariel. And, uh, <laughs> Just for it, those like, for those watching. It was, it was like a triple, like triple came together. Yeah. And I had to do this show. I was at the cellar, and it was like it was at its worst. And I had to fucking watch the audience. I could hear them go. Look at his eye. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I, you know, I gave it some thought of like a joke or like to address it. And yeah. I didn't want to. Mm-hmm. I didn't have yeah. enough about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I've uh, in McDougal, yeah. where everyone was right there, I saw multiple people go, look at his eye. Look at his eye. Look at his eye. eye. And it was humiliating. And then also, too, like, the sty, some people will be like, do you have pink eye? And pink eye is, like, literally, like, the most soul-sucking thing ever because then they immediately think that you've been, like, scratching your asshole and then rubbing your eye. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Because everybody got pink eye as a kid just from, like, you know, playing soccer and doing shit. Right. But, yeah, yeah, there's nothing worse. And you're like, no, it's a fucking sty. It's not pink eye. And 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 I had to do, there was a cameo, time-sensitive cameo, someone's birthday, and it was, like, 50 bucks there off me. And I had to do a half-screen cameo and and i said on the cameo i said i just you guys know i have a sty but i have to do this cameo now and it's i haven't made any promos for any upcoming shows because i can't i look horrible oh okay my this has got to stop ariel pointing out your stuff <laughs> i i'm trying to get i'm trying to get more like cool healthy snacks for the okay. road like i'm tired of trader joe's i can't do it anymore i can't i'm so bored of the food this has got to stop. Every health food store having fucking crystals and astrology and like they couldn't. It wasn't enough to keep the health store afloat just selling healthy food. So they have to have a whole section of of not even a consistency of 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 woo woo, but it's crystals and it's the astrology. And I just want fucking dried star fruit. And I'm tired of of why. When does health have to be to, to be mixed in with all this other stuff that right. makes me that makes me uncomfortable? And I'm just like, give me a health food store that's by the book. I don't know how these two things became conflated. Mm-hmm. And I think it's like it's an inverse of like the same way that like like uh, 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 you know with like Republican or conservative, it's about like kind of you know like barbecue and shit food. And it's like, can we break food away from beliefs and politics and give me a Republican? health food store wouldn't that be nice yes mm-hmm. or or a democrat good barbecue what's in the republican health food store it's it's Tell like me what makes it republican I mean, a lot of jerky mm-hmm. but i think more like it's like but low sodium low sodium, low sodium but it's it's like grass fed yes it's like dried apples and it's like this goes towards you know uh uh, uh taking down hillary clinton or finding out who <laughs> killed the so-and-so or it's something like that. But or grinds for Kim Trails. Something like that. Mm. You know what I mean? Wow. Mm-hmm. Let's go into our final segment. <laughs> you better count your blessings. 
I'll uh, I'll go first. We'll end with you, Heather. My my blessing. Uh, uh, got to work this weekend. It was a tough weekend, but I got to work with a, a guy named Ty Colgate. Uh, he's friends with uh, Liam Nelson, my other other uh, opener, and it was great. It was wonderful. We Love got that. stoned. We went to you know. There's a thing of uh, some of this opener. I think part of it is like let's hang out. We're in the middle of nowhere. And you want to be a good hang, and, and he he was just great. And we, we got high. We went on roller coasters. We went to a, a sushi restaurant where you took the plates off of a Ooh, thing. Love they it. They had a robot waiter, which was cool, until it asked for a tip. <gasps> and I was confronted. I said, what, hold up. Do I have to tip the robot? robot? And so I tipped 10% because it was a robot. But I should have tipped zero because it's a robot. <laughs> But also, I would have tipped 30% because it's a fucking robot. <laughs> and it could murder you. Uh-huh. You know? Well, that's the southerness in you. And as the Jew, it's it's a 10. It's a 10 for the robot. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that. It, 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 but there, there is nothing better than finding somebody you can travel with. Somebody you can travel well with. Who you... Mm. It's just, it's so hard you know, to find. This is, why, this is why I, you know, I, I miss, miss, you our, too. miss our days. I miss you too, John Michael. <laughs> I, uh, I, and what's, what's your blessing? My blessing is yeast. I love yeast so much. I like to bake. Oh, fantastic. And we just had Rosh Hashanah. So I, I baked a challah and I had just such a beautiful little yeast bloom when I added my water and my yeast and my sugar and I watched it get to like eat the sugar. And then, you know, when, when yeast bubbles up, that's the yeast, it's a, it, it's expelling gases. It's just farting and burping. And I love that so much. It's this little live thing. It smells so good. It makes alcohol great. It, it, it makes, it makes bread. And Fermentation, I just, just I in just, general, I just beautiful love thing. Everything about yeast. It's so cute. It's alive. It lives in my fridge. And I, I'm, I, I can't say enough good things about yeast. I love that. That was beautiful. Thank you. It was really like I didn't realize. I'm I'm want to go like to a bakery now and just, just smell. Get, get a a bully of sourdough. You know what I mean? That's, that's you gotta, great. You got to explore this juice stuff. Yeah, I really it. need to. I yeah, mean, it's it's there's a lot of fun. Like even like, I'm Jewish, but it wasn't until like my girlfriend who grew up very religious. Yeah. that I feel like it's like oh, it's a whole a whole new world. I got a question. Are Jews uh, usually dehydrated a lot? Because I know that you they always say, <laughs> but I know that they usually say like, you know, you guys always have rummy tum issues, like tummy sure, yes, issues. But I'm tummy. really always thirsty and I'm not diabetic or pre-diabetic. But um, I, my, my, what my blessing is, counter blessing, I was going to say hydration tablets. I can't live without electrolytes. What is a hydration tablet? Like, you know, like a, like an energy, or not an, sorry, not an energy. God damn it. I'm sorry. Um, like, you know, I get these noon hydration tablets, not sponsored, just end you. You and I get them at like Whole please Foods. sponsor, please, please sponsor. sponsor. Us. Yeah. I love it. We'll tablets. take it. I would gladly. Yeah. It has take new it. in it. What? Yeah. What's more yeah. Jewish? Noon, noon, n u u n, and they're just hydration tablets because I get like really bad leg cramps when I'm traveling, and so I live off hydration tablets. Like it's got electrolytes, is what it's saying. Does it go in your water and it yes. dissolves, or you just take it like no? A pill? It goes in your water and dissolves, and that is I'm like a constantly thirsty bitch, and I've had blood work done, and they're like, no, your your levels My- normal. My girlfriend Tova, water. I mean, insane. 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 There's, there's. Can you? <laughs> whenever she asks me to 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 get her a glass of water, she says, "I'm gonna drink this all now." So get a second. Like it's it's a t- yeah. it's a double trip. Uh-huh. Ask. I am the exact same way, and my husband's just like, "This is insane." I mean, I am the white woman with like the big Stanley cup or the Yeti oh, cup. I mean, yeah, that always. is me, and I walk around with that, and I don't give a shit because I'm so fucking thirsty. And my go to see like a functional medicine doctor, and she's like, "You, your levels look normal, but I'm I can't live without hydration. A little extra kick, you know what I mean?" So if I can't drink all the Stanleys and the Yetis, I pop one of those bad boys in, and I'm feeling like I'm on the fuck. Top of the world. I like for now on like every medical question you have, like, is this a Jew thing? <laughs> yeah. I don't yeah, think. Never yeah. a positive I, Here's trait. why yeah. I so. don't think it's a Jewish thing is because with when you're Jewish, there's nothing you can do that will ever make you feel on top of the world. So if it's curable, it's not Jewish. Okay. Is that fair? Uh, yes. Okay. Well, um, this was a wonderful episode. Thanks for having I was me. So, I was oh so, God. thank you for doing this. Oh my gosh. You know, you know it's very nice of you. I uh, this this is gonna come out on uh, October third. So what Ooh. would you like to plug? Oh, October third. Well, um, uh, my Netflix special "Son I Never Had" is coming out on October seventeenth. Amazing. And then I don't know. Come check me out on the road, HeatherOnTour.com. I'm on the comeback tour, baby. Yeah. 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 Hell yeah, Ariel. 
Uh, I will be this weekend. I will be opening for Melissa Villasenor in Indianapolis at Helium. So please come to that. And then I will be in Louisville, Kentucky, October 20th and 21st at Planet of the Tapes headlining. Uh, and yeah, you can go to Ariel Elias Comedy for all of my dates. I'm coming to Fort Worth. I'm coming Hell to, yeah. which, you know, and I'm coming to your airport. So that's how much I'm excited to come to Fort Worth is I'm willing to go to the airport. Uh, I'm coming to, to, to Austin, to, to Stanford. So Ariel Elias Comedy.com. Me, you know where to find me, uh, at your Marcus Arezi. I'm in Dubuque, Iowa this weekend at uh, Comedy Bar. Then I'm in Scotts. You sometimes you look at upcoming dates, you're like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fuck me, dude. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm in Scottsdale, Arizona, yeah, October baby. 5th through 7th. But then, ladies and gentlemen, I'm and I'm excited about those. If you live there, please come. But then I will be headlining for the first time Zanies in Chicago, October 19th through 21st. Please come. Get it. Join the Patreon, patreon.com slash downside. You know, the, the more patrons we have, one day we can record these episodes and not release them a month later because I will have the infrastructure to do it. But to get that, I need you to join the Patreon and, uh, uh, you know, get all your DNA tests. Uh, find out if you're Jewish <laughs> because it's a great time to be Jewish in America. This is The Downside. One, two, three. Downside. You're listening to The Downside. The Downside. With John Marco Cerezi. Tell him, Russell. Subscribe to the downside right now. Where? Down here. Or here. We don't know, but just do it. Or also, what else could they do? They could follow the Patreon. They could subscribe to the Patreon. Ah, no! Patreon.com slash downside.